Okay, great. All right, so here we start. So like I was saying, uh, the one, the document we're using for tonight's practice is coming from uh, this university. These are concepts that we've discussed, but now we just want to go through them and see how we apply them. And yeah, if you've got any other questions from other universities, just feel free to share them and then I'll add them to our next class. Okay, so in this case, we are practicing uh, linear momentum. And under linear momentum, uh, just a few things that you have to keep in mind. There are two things. First, it's the definition of impulse. So of course you have what momentum itself is. Uh, momentum, if I use P for momentum, it's just the product of mass and velocity. So this is what momentum is. But we use momentum to define what impulse is. And impulse is defined as the change in momentum. So this is one definition of impulse, the change in momentum. Another definition of impulse now relates it to force and time. So impulse can be seen from a mathematical point of view as just a product of force and time. So of course, using these two, by equating them since the left-hand side is all impulse, it implies that Ft is equals to the change in momentum, which just reduces to force, being equals to change in momentum divided by, by time. Again, we've done these before. If you haven't, again, I'll, I'll just attach a link to uh, a video where we actually looked at all this so that you can just refer to them if there is need. Okay, so this is the first thing that you need to understand. The second thing that you have to uh, keep in mind is the conservation of momentum. The conservation of momentum. Now, the conservation of momentum, momentum, of course, um, is conserved. So in any collision, so now we are already talking about collisions. So in any collision, momentum will be conserved. What does that imply? If you have two objects, let's say this is A, and you have another object here, this is, let's say, B, and these two objects collide. So the conservation of momentum says, if you add the momentum of A initially, so I'll use U to mean initial velocity. So UA means the initial velocity of A plus, uh, let me say this is MA, the mass of A, just in case their masses are different. So here we have mass of B, the initial velocity of B. So when you add the initial momentum of both objects, so when you add for A and when you add the initial momentum for B, the conservation of momentum predicts that this will be equal to their finals. So when I add the final momentum for A plus the final momentum for B, these will be the same. So the initial momentum will be equals to the final momentum. Now, this is general, but momentum being a vector quantity actually tells us one thing. We can conserve momentum in the x-axis and we can also do it in the y-axis. It's basically the same as this equation, but when you're going to the res respective axis, all you have to just keep in mind is that instead of just the general velocity here, it will be the x component. And instead of the velocity for b here, it will be the x component. So these will be x components for the velocities, masses to be the same. And when you go to the y-axis, now the velocities will have to be y components. Okay, so I just wanted to keep that in to, to just mention that for a start, because the those will be the key concepts that you have to understand when it comes to, um, to momentum as a topic, linear momentum. Now, having gone through a brief description of what you need, let's look at how you actually use those concepts. So let's use these questions for target practice. Consider the first case where we have a cannon of mass 1.5 tons. And the best part here is they have even given us the relationship between the ton and, um, and the kg. So uh, this 1.5 is just the same as this. Okay, so fires a cannonball of mass five kgs. The speed 
uh, with which the boat leaves the cannon is 70 meters per second relative to the earth. What is the initial speed of recoil of the cannon? Now what happens? This is a classic question. Uh, and sometimes they will ask it in terms of a bullet that leaves um, a gun. So sometimes they'll give you a gun like this and say, this is some, some pistol, don't mind my drawing. So the bullet is fired to go in that direction. They give you the mass of the bullet, they give you the mass of the gun. Then they tell you to say that the bullet leaves the gun with some speed, V. And they'll ask you to say, calculate the recoil of the gun, which is, this is similar to what this question uh, is actually asking us to do. So the recoil, of course, is uh, the reason why uh, sometimes if you hold your gun wrongly, it might dislocate your shoulder. Because whenever a collision occurs, the gun that fires the bullet will actually be pushed backwards with a lot of momentum. Now, that momentum can be large enough such that it can dislocate your shoulder if you were not holding your gun very well. I think I've seen a video where someone was holding a gun wrongly, and then after shooting, uh, firing that, 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 that gun, the back of the gun actually hit the person's eye. I think I'll share the, that video in the group if I, if I still have it. But anyway, enough with that. Let's do the math now, the math part of what is happening. So we want to predict the recoil of this gun here. Now, what happens? Well, we need two things. The things that are colliding. Well, in as much as the cannonball is inside, when we are starting, the cannonball is inside. Let's position it, let's say, somewhere here. Um, we can even say it's way at the end here. The cannonball is inside our cannon here. But we still have two objects. One is the cannonball. I'll take it as MA. So the cannonball is given to be mass, to have mass five cases. And then the second object is the cannon itself. And the question tells us that the mass of the cannon is uh, 1.5 tons or 1.5. That's 1.5 by 10. Uh, this 103, my assumption is that this is 10 to the power three. So not 103 kgs, no, I'm, I'm assuming, I will assume it's to the power three there. Okay, so let me just move this up. Okay, so with that done, what else are they saying? The masses are done, so I've sorted out the first sentence, I've obtained everything that is there. Now, let's see. The speed of which the ball leaves the cannon. So they're telling us the speed of the ball here. But I want you guys to observe one thing. When they're telling us this speed, they give us the speed the ball leaves the cannon with, and they're saying that this is 70 meters per second. Now, here's a question. We need two values for speed. We have the initial speed for the ball, and we also have the final speed for the ball. So when they give this 70 meters per second, you must understand which of these two are they giving us. Are they giving us the initial or they're giving us the final? So what do you guys think? What are they yeah. giving there? Yeah? Maybe it's the initial. Maybe it's the initial. Okay. The key thing here lies in um, the state before you fire the, uh, the, the cannon here. When the bullet is inside, that is before collision. The bow is inside our cannon. It's not yet triggered. What will be the velocity of the cannon itself? And what will be the velocity of the cannon bow before you pull the trigger? I can even say you have a gun, the same gun example. Again, don't mind my drawing. You have a gun here, all right, exactly like this. But inside, you have a bullet. So the bullet is our MA, the gun is our MB. So before you pull the trigger, the initial of the bullet, uh, the velocity of the bullet before you pull the trigger, 
that will be the initial velocity. So while the bullet is inside the gun, what will be its initial velocity? What do you guys think in this case? Zero meters per second. Yes, before you pull the trigger, actually even wrote it there, that's a zero. You haven't yet pulled the trigger. Well, how about the gun? You haven't pulled the trigger yet. You're just holding the, 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 the gun. You are aiming at your target. You haven't put the trigger yet. It implies that even the gun will be addressed, provided, of course, you're not moving. So even the gun will be addressed. So its initial velocity will also be zero. Movement only occurs after you fire the gun and after you fire your gun. When you fire your gun, the bullet will now be thrust to move forward and the gun will be pushed backwards in that direction. It's the same concept here. If you've watched movies, you must have seen guns like this. And these are actually very heavy guns, such that when the bullet or the bow is fired forward, you see the whole system here being pushed. Actually, not even, not, not, maybe not the whole system, but at least you will see this upper part trying to move backwards. It actually moves backwards in a very short period of time, very fast. So it moves backwards as the bullet goes forward. If you've watched movies of some sort where this is, you should be able to relate with this. Okay, so with that in mind, this velocity that they were, give, they were giving us, it was the velocity the bullet was living with, meaning here the gun has been fired, or should I say our cannon here has been triggered. Because of that, before being fired, before being fired, before the trigger was put, the velocity of the ball was zero. But after being, uh, being triggered or being fired, the velocity is now 70 meters per second. Now, how about for the, the cannon itself? It's the same thing. Initially, it wasn't moving, zero. But after being triggered, we have no idea what the velocity is. It's what we are looking for. So let's put a question mark there. Now we have everything. Let's use the conservation of momentum. So we have the mass of the ball, the initial velocity of the ball, plus the mass of the cannon ball, the cannon I mean now, and then the initial velocity of the cannon itself. This has to be equals to their final momentum for the ball, final, and for the cannon itself, final. So again, this is the conservation of momentum. Now observe that everything here is happening in the horizontal axis. So if I was to say that, okay, yeah, momentum is uh, a vector quantity, so I want to say in the x-axis and in the y-axis, you have to see that there's nothing happening in the y-axis. So the conservation of momentum in the y-axis will all be zeros. Everything is happening in the x-axis. This is why for calculations like this, you don't even have to say, okay, in the x and the y, Everything here is happening in a straight line. So you can maintain that straight line. So now, what is the initial velocities? Well, the, initially they were all zeros. So the left-hand side, these are all zeros. Since UA is zero and UB is zero. So you only have to worry about their finals. So the left-hand side, I will have a zero here. The mass of the ball is five kgs. The final velocity of the ball, I'll take the ball according to the diagram. The ball seems to be going to the right-hand side or in the right direction, so I'll take it to be positive. The cannon ball, the cannon itself, not the ball, the cannon, the mass, its mass is 1.5 by 10 to the power 3. Its final velocity is what we are looking for. Now, if they give you something like uh, tons here, while well, the other one is in kgs, you just want to make sure that you use the same units. That's why in this substitution, I chose to use the mass of the cannon in kgs, not the one they gave in tons. So I used the converted one. Okay, so from here, it's just now a bit of math. Make VB subject of the formula. So I'll just pull it out here, divide both sides by its coefficient. You end up with five, 
by 70 divided by 1.5 by 10 to the power minus 3. Can you guess what's missing here? What's missing? I'm making V be the subject of the formula. Can you guess what's missing in my expression here? You guys are not following. Then just see that this has to be negative here. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. It had to be negative there. Okay, so once that is done, now just simplify. Perform the division there. What will be our VB? What will be our VB there? Anyone doing it for us? Okay, so yeah, I don't have a calculator, so I, I, I won't do this. But once you do the math here, if anyone is doing it, just give me the value once you find it. But it will give you the velocity of the cannon itself, which is what uh, will come here. Yeah? 33 meters what 233 233 like this well this looks too big uh yeah i guess i've made the music on the powers but that's what i found well it looks too big Try to, you see, here's what we expect. You expect the, the, the ball to move very fast because it has a smaller mass. But you expect the cannonball to move slightly slower because of its bigger mass. If, because what you're seeing here from this equation, since the left hand side, these are all zeros. What it means is that from the right hand side, we are going to end up with MA VA being equal to MB VB, but just opposite directions. So this will just be negative, or either one of them will be negative. The only way that these two will be the same, this mass is very small. This is just five kgs. But look at this mass. This mass is 1.5 by 10 to the power 3. The only way that these, these products will be the same is that since the mass here is bigger, the velocity here has to be smaller. And since here the mass is very small, the velocity has to be very big. So that when I multiply these two, I should get the same answer as this side. This is why I'm saying there's no way VP can be bigger than VA, which is 70. Do you get that? So try to go through the math here. I can even try to expand it a little bit, simplify it 5 by uh, 75. 5 by 75 is 5 by 7, I mean, is 35. So on top, we get 350. Then 1.5, 10 to the power 3 is 1,000. So 1,000 by 5, by 1.5, we get 1,500. Clearly, when you divide these two, you can't get a number greater than 1. So if you do it at this stage, what are you getting?
0.23 okay this this is much better so this becomes the velocity of the cannon so this would be the recoil it actually makes sense the bullet is going in the positive direction to be positive the cannon will have to go backward so it has to be negative so that answers the first question. Do we have any questions on the first one before we move on? Uh, so I'm, I'm getting a bit confused in the substitution part because okay. the can, cannon ball, those two things are confusing me. The cannon and the cannon ball. The, 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 the substitute letters that you've used the a and b so the okay. a the yeah how about this let's define them a cannonball so when i say when i say ma <clears throat> i mean the mass of the cannonball when I say VA, I mean the final velocity of the cannonball. And B, let this represent the cannon itself. Does it make sense now? Um, yes, uh, that would be a bit easy. Okay. All right, so this part is done. Let's move on to the next one. In the next part, they're saying two balls, X and Y, are supported by a long string as shown. The two balls are each pulled back and pushed towards each other. When the balls collide at the position, at the position shown in the figure, meaning this position, um, let's see, shown in the figure, the strings are vertical. The balls rebound in opposite directions. Then they're saying the figure 3.3 shows data of X and Y during this collision. So that is this table here. Okay, next up, what, what else are they, are they saying here? The positive direction is horizontal and to the right. Use the conservation. Ah, so they're saying convey. Eh? This is supposed to be conservation, not that. So use the conservation of linear momentum to determine the mass M of Y. So they want us to find what M here is. That is just part one. This is a good question, but it's a little bit longer and requires you to really um, get what is happening here, but it's really, really basic. And I hope you guys have uh, actually seen what is happening here. The first thing is the table actually gives us all the details. Because even without seeing the diagram here, there's, everything has been interpreted for us. Because from the diagram, we get the direction. The initial, the, the initial velocity of x is to the right. And when you see here, the velocity just before, which is the initial for x, just before it is to the right and that positive there clarifies everything even here velocity just before for y it's 2.8 but it's going to the left and they've been indicated a negative for us so they've done the heavy work for us with this table all we have to do is conserve momentum and plug in substitute and then we should be good so this question couldn't be any easier but let's work it out so from the conservation of momentum again, everything is linear. We have, so we have X and Y. So I'll say the mass of X, the initial velocity of X, plus the mass of Y, the initial velocity of Y is equal to the mass of X, the final velocity of X, plus the mass of Y, 
the final velocity of y. If you see the way these are, let me just relate them to this table now. Mass of x is this one. Mass of y is this one. Initial of x is this one, because this is just before. That's where the initial is. And initial of y will be this one. Final of x is this, and final of y is this. So this was actually very basic. It just required you being able to identify what is what. So in terms to substituting, where there's mass in y, I'll put m, which is what we are looking for. But what I would do here is, if I decide to use mass of x in grams, then I must expect my final answer to also be in grams. Usually, you'd be advised to work with mass in kgs, uh, which is the wise thing to do, especially if you do not know when it is okay and when it is not okay for you to convert for you to convert or not to. So if you don't know when it is okay and so on, just convert to kgs, work with kgs every time. But in this case, it is okay for us to actually use grams because our final answer will also be in grams. So we can still just use the grams. But since I'm saying convert every time, let me just convert. 50 grams will be equals to just divide it by a thousand. So this becomes 0 0.05 kgs. So when I substitute mass of x, 0 0.05, Initial for x, according to this, the initial for x is 4.5. Plus mass of y, we have no clue what it is, but they've given us capital M there. The initial for y, it's minus 2.8. Don't forget that minus. The other side, mass of x, again, I'll use the one converted to cages, so I know my final mass for m will also be in cages. The final for x, according to this, it's minus 1.8. Plus the mass of y, again, I took this as just capital M, or they gave it to us as capital M. The final for y, 1.4. Simplify. What will be the product here? Uh, 0 0.225. 0 0.225. This becomes minus 2.8m equal to, and that will be the product here. Negative 0 0.09. Negative 0 0.09. Then plus 1.4 M. So now group the like terms. Everything with M on one side, everything without M on the other. So I'll move the minus M to the other side, and I'll move the minus 0 0.9, 0 0.09 to the left side. So I'll end up with 0 0.225 plus 0 0.09 being equal to 1.4 m plus 2.8 m. So when you add on the left side, what are you going to get there? 0 0.315. And on the right side? Uh, 4.2. Now, we want to find what m is, so you are likely going to divide through by the coefficient of m, which is 4.2. So it cancels out here. This will imply that mass will be equals to what? What would be this? 0 0.075. 75. What would be the units? Grams. Okay. Mm. 
kgs remember i did say since i've converted the mass of x this is going to be in kgs but if you had used the 50 grams the way it was you would have found this answer at 75 grams okay so this is how you approach this one any questions here Okay, looks like we are okay there. Let's move on to the next one, B. What are they saying in B? In B now they're saying state and explain whether the collision is elastic. Now, is this collision elastic? What does it imply or what does it mean when a collision is said to be elastic? Who can tell us that? can answer that when is a collision elastic well we did describe three types yeah go ahead there is total conservation of kinetic energy okay when kinetic energy is conserved. So if a collision is said to be elastic, then kinetic energy has to be conserved. What does that mean? It means that when you account for the kinetic energy initial for all the particles involved, sum them up, and then compare them with the kinetic energy of all the particles, uh, the same particles after collision summed up, if the two values will be the same, then we expect that, or we can conclude that that collision is elastic. Let's check for our case here. We have two particles, X and Y. Let's get their kinetic energies. So I'll get the kinetic energy for X initial, and I want to add it to the kinetic energy for Y initial. Then I'll compare them to their finals. So we know how we get kinetic energy, it's half, mvx so i'll use u to mean initial so the initial for x squared plus half so let's say this is x here as well m y u squared let's put their velocities so this becomes half the mass of x 0 0.05 the initial velocity for x, that is uh, 4.5. But it has to be squared. Plus, how about for y? Half, we now know the mass of y, so we use that mass, 0 0.075. And the velocity for y initial was given minus 2.8. So what do we get when we uh, simplify this? What are we getting there? Uh, 0 0.51 and the second part What are we getting for the second part? Uh, 0 0.294. 0 0.294. So add these up. What 
what are we going to get? Is it 0 .0 0 0.8 or something? Is it this? Uh, yes, that's it. Okay. So this becomes the kinetic energy before. Let's see the kinetic energy after. Same thing, half, but now it's the final velocities. So again, basically doing the same thing. The only thing that would be different is the velocities. So what would be the velocities? For x, it's minus 1.8. And for y, the final velocity is 1.4. Again, what will be the product here? Zero point zero eight one. Zero point zero eight one. How about this side? Zero point zero seven four. Okay, so I hope you guys are verifying these values. I wouldn't want to make mistakes here. So, yeah, this is if this is what we've got, what will be the sum here? So that's a five here. Uh, zero point um, one five five. Zero point one five five. Okay. Now, here's the question: Is the collision elastic, and why? So can you answer if the collision is elastic after seeing these calculations? And based on our calculations here, justify your answer. You want to try? Okay, so the idea here is uh, basic. I think when we started, I did mention, um, and I think uh, one student actually did say, for a collision to be elastic, the kinetic energy of the whole system initial has to be equal to the kinetic energy of the whole system final. So kinetic energy has to be conserved. So this is what it implies. But here we have obtained the total kinetic energy before, and this is what we have. But when we calculate the total kinetic energy afterwards, look at that, it is less. We don't have the same. Because of that, our conclusion is that this collision is not elastic. Had these values been the same, the conclusion would have been the collision is elastic or was elastic. But in this case, the values are different. Kinetic energy is not conserved. Hence, the collision was not elastic. Is that OK? OK, that answers question two. What more do we have? OK, we have a few more. Let's see if we have enough time to do at least. Actually, just one more is left. Let me just try to pick up the pace 
and see if we can finish question three. In question three, they're saying that we have a constant resultant force. Uh, let's see, is this part of what we are doing? Uh, mass of that, ah, okay, works for us. A constant resultant force F acts on an object A. The variation of time, the variation with time of the velocity for the motion of A is shown. So look at this. They have plotted velocity in meters per second against the time in second. So that's what the statement was saying, the variation with time of velocity. So this is a velocity time graph. Uh, yeah, for the motion of A is shown. So this is the graph that we have. Next, they say the mass of A is 840 grams. So they have given us the mass of our object A. So mass is equals to 840 grams. What this implies is that we have 0 0.84 kgs. What else? Calculate the force. Calculate for T is equals to 0 to T is equals to 4 seconds. They just say that for this period when time is equals to 0 to when time is equals to 4 seconds. Calculate, uh, what are they saying? Calculate what? In the first part, they want us to calculate the change in momentum. Well, this has to be basic. The change in momentum. What are they asking us to calculate here? So look at this. Calculate the change in momentum. What do they want us to find here? What's that? The impulse. The impulse. So in the first part, they are actually asking us to find the impulse. So we can say, the impulse I, which is the change in momentum. Remember how we calculate the change in momentum? The mass is given uh, with the mass final velocity minus the mass initial velocity. The mass is the same on both parts. So it's 0 0.84. Final velocity, what would be our final velocity? So you have to look at our diagram here. So look at what each small uh, square on this graph represents. You have to be very particular. If this is eight, uh, eight here, and this is 10, nine there, I mean, there are 10 divisions between. So each division has to mean 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. So when you look at where this graph ends, when time is equals to four seconds, it ends at eight point what? I think it's 8.8. .8. Yeah, that looks like 8.8. .8. So we're going to put final velocity 8.8 .8. minus the mass again times the initial velocity. So what will be our initial velocity? Again, initial velocity is at t is equals to zero, which is here. So what is the velocity? It's 4 point what when time is equals to zero? That will be the velocity there. Anyone? At t is equals to zero, what was the velocity? 4.0. Four 4.0, no. So again, you're looking at this. Look at where the graph is starting from. 4.0 is here. Four point zero is here. It starts somewhere here. What's the value there? Four point two. Four point two. 
So that is 4.2. So that's 4.2. So now we do the math. What would be the product here? Seven point three nine two. So at seven point three nine two. Then minus what would be this part? Three point five two eight. Three point five two eight. And what will be the difference? Three point eight six four. What's that? Three point eight six four. Okay. This is in house. What are the units? So it's just no, that's force. In pulse, you look at this. It's mass, kgs, and then we have velocity here, meters per second. So in pulse here we have kg meter per second. So these will be the units. Okay, so that's sorted. That's part one. And then in part two they want the force so for the force remember the expression that we showed earlier on it was here whereas we have already obtained what the in the change in momentum is getting the force will be easy so the force will be equals to the change in momentum which is 3.864 but just from calculating that divided by the time the time is how long it took the momentum to change it took it from zero, they actually specified from zero to four seconds. So the duration here is just four seconds. So this is going to be four seconds. So what would be the answer if you divide? Yes, zero point nine six six. Now this, of course, will have the newtons because it is a force. Okay, that's part two. Now, here's what is happening in part C. In part C, now they're saying the force F is removed at T is equals to four seconds. Object A continues at constant velocity before colliding with B as illustrated. So object A with its mass like this, continues or let me say maintains that velocity meaning the initial velocity before collision for a is that 8.8 .8 that we found earlier on now it collides with another object b b is initially at rest meaning the initial for b is zero the mass of b is this the object a and b join together what does this mean it means that the final velocity for a will be equals to the final velocity for B. Let's just say that velocity will be V. And that velocity, according to this question, will be 4.7 .7 meters per second. Looks like they're giving us everything. What do they want us to find then? Now, in part one, they're saying by calculation, show that the changes in momentum for A and of B during the collisions are equal. So the change in momentum for A and the change in momentum for B show that they are equal and opposite. Okay, so show that they are equal and opposite. The second part, by reference to the speeds of A and of B, explain whether the collision is elastic. Okay, so this is all that you have to do. So just get the change in momentum for A and get the change in momentum for B. 
sure that they will be the same value, but the values will just be opposite. They will, one will be positive, one will be negative. That's all you have to show here. So try to see if you can perform the calculation here and let's see what you guys will find in the group. We'll end here for tonight. We'll continue. We'll see next tomorrow I'll be traveling. So uh, we'll see if we can continue uh, next week or something. And I do intend to start teaching you guys math as well. But for me to start doing that, let's see if, if you guys can actually bring more of your friends to join us. So invite as many of your friends as possible to start learning with us. If we can be many here, then I'll start teaching you guys math as well for free. Okay, so I think that's everything for tonight. We can continue chatting in the group. Um, yeah, as usual, invite your friends. If you've got questions you'd want us to do, share them with me or in the group. Let's learn together. Any questions? All right, guys, have a good night.